In this video, we're going to take a look at the AQA Foundation Paper 2 that I've put together. Question 1. Make Y the subject. In order to make Y the subject, we need to divide both sides by 3. This will isolate Y by itself. And because I've got to do X divided by 3, and I can't divide X by 3, I'm going to leave it as a fraction. So there we have it. Y is now the subject. For question two, order the following values from smallest to largest. In order to be able to compare a decimal, a percentage, and a fraction, we need to write them in the same number type. So for instance, if I write each of these as a decimal, 0 0.75 will be 0 0.75, 72%. To turn this into a decimal, we divide by 100, and this will give me 0 0.72. In order to be able to convert a fraction into a decimal. We need to divide the numerator by the denominator. And doing this will give me 0 0.777 recurring. Now place each of these decimals in the correct order. So the smallest is 0 0.72, the next is 0 0.75, and then it's 0 0.7 recurring. Remember to go back to the original question and actually order the original set of numbers. So 0 0.72 related to 72%, 0 0.75, and then 7 over 9. Question 3. Factorise the following quadratic expression. Here we can see that we've got a common factor of 3 in both 3 and 12. So 3 can go on the outside of the bracket. Looking at x squared and x, x is also a common factor. So the highest common factor of both terms is 3x. In order to go from 3x to 3x squared, I have to times it by x. So when I expand out the brackets, 3x times x would give me 3x squared. And in order to be able to get minus 12x, I would have to times 3x by negative 4. And this is your answer. Question 4. Sarah is organising a book sale. She's collected 120 books altogether. If she managed to sell three quarters of the books, and of the ones she sold, 30% were non-fiction, how many non-fiction books did she sell? To answer this question, we need to underline the key information, that there are 120 books, and she manages to sell three quarters of the books. So the first thing we need to do is find three quarters of 120. Of meaning times means I can now do 3 quarters times 120, and this will give me 90. The next part says that she sold 30% that were non-fiction, and the question is asking me to find how many non-fiction books did she sell. So I now need to find 30% of 90. 30% as a decimal, when I divide it by 100, is 0 0.3 of meaning times 0 0.3 times by 90 and the answer is 27. Question 5. Jared says the area of the square is larger than the area of the circle due to the side length of the square being larger than the radius of the circle. Is Jared correct? To work out the area of a square we multiply the base times by the height. So 7 times 7 is 49 centimetres squared. To calculate the area of the circle, we use the formula pi times the radius squared. Pi times 5 squared is the same as 25 times by pi. Typing this into my calculator would give 78.54 centimetres squared to two decimal places. So to answer this question, is Jared correct? No. The area of the circle is larger than that of the square. Question 6. Calculate the 
following expression using your calculator and give your answer as a decimal to three decimal places. When you enter this into your calculator, remember that the mixed number needs to be entered using the mixed number button. And doing the multiplication before you do the addition, 2 and 6 sevenths multiplied by 5 6 gives 50 over 21. Now adding on 8 ninths gives 206 over 63. Clicking on the yes to D button and rounding to three decimal places gives me 3.270. Question 7. Expand the following binomials. Now when we expand we multiply everything in the second bracket by everything in the first. So multiplying everything by x would give me x squared plus 3.5x. The next bit is 2.2 times x and this gives me 2.2x and finally 2.2 times by 3.5. This gives 7.7. .7. Now collect any like terms. Here I can see 3.5x and 2.2x simplifies to give the result of x squared plus 5.7x add 7.7. Question 8. A rectangle is drawn below. Reflect the rectangle in the line x is equal to 5 x is equal to 5 is a vertical line that cuts the x-axis at x is 5. Now reflecting each point in turn, this point is 2 squares away from the mirror line, so it will be 2 squares on the mirror line on the other side. This point is 4 squares, so reflecting it means it's there. This point will now reflect here, and this point will reflect here. And now I've got my resulting shape. Here is the final answer. Question 9. Jack is looking to buy some apples for his school's charity bake sale. He found two offers at different shops. Shop A has 15 apples at £3.50. Shop B has 20 apples at £4.25. Which shop offers the best value for money? Show your working. In order to be able to determine which shop is the best value, I need to calculate the cost of one apple in each shop. To do this, take the cost and divide it by how many apples there are. So £3.50 divided by 15 means that each apple in shop A is 0 0.233 recurring. In shop B, if we do 4.25 divided by 20, I get 0 0.2125. Here you can see that shop B has a smaller price per apple and therefore shop B is the best value. Question 10. A triangle has three angles in the ratio of 5 to 3 to 7. Calculate the value of the largest angle in the triangle. Angles in a triangle add up to 180. And we can see that we're having to split this into 15 parts altogether. 180 divided by 15 means that each part is now worth 12 degrees. The largest angle is going to be represented by the biggest number of parts. So the largest angle can be calculated by 7 times by 12 which would then give me 84 degrees as being the largest angle in the triangle. Question 11. A school conducted a survey to find out what sports the students prefer. The results are displayed in the following two-way table. Every row has a total. 40 and 10 means that there are 50 boys altogether. 50 plus 70 means that there were 120 students altogether. 
Looking at the basketball total, I've got 50. And if 10 of them were boys, that means that 40 were girls. And if there were 40 girls that liked basketball, but 70 girls altogether, that means that there were 30 girls that liked football. 40 plus 30 is 70. I've now completed the two-way table. Question 12. A function machine performs two operations on an input number. The operations are shown below. If the final output from the function machine is 26, what was the original input? To answer this question, we need to work backwards. Instead of adding 5, we're going to take away 5. And instead of divide, times in by 3, we're going to divide by 3. So following these operations, 26 take away 5 is 21, and 21 divided by 3 is 7. Y is 7. Question 13. The following pie chart displays the distribution of preferences for different ice cream flavours among a group of 300 students. Calculate the number of students who prefer strawberry. Angles in a pie chart add up to 360 degrees. So to calculate, calculate the angle that strawberry represents, we need to do 360, take away 108, take away 90. This gives me 162 degrees. Now as a fraction, this can now be written as 162 out of 360 degrees. And if we take the same proportion of 300, we'll then calculate the number of students that liked strawberry. The word of means multiply in maths. So 162 over 360 times by 300 means that 135 students liked strawberry. Question 14. A car travels from town A to town B, a distance of 180 miles. The journey takes three hours. The car then travels back to town A along the same route, but this time the journey takes four hours and 15 minutes due to heavy traffic. What is the average speed of the entire journey? To have gone from town A to town B, the car would have traveled 180 miles. And to have then returned back to town A, it would have traveled another 180 miles. This means that altogether the car has traveled 360 miles. The first part of the journey was taken in three hours. The second part of the journey was four hours and 15 minutes. As a fraction, four hours and 15 minutes is four and one quarter hours. This means that the total amount of time was seven and one quarter hours. In order to calculate the speed, we need to divide the distance 360 by the number of hours, so seven and one quarter. 360 divided by seven and one quarter gives me 49.66 to two decimal places. And because we measured distance in miles and time in hours, this will be miles per hour. Question 15. Consider the quadratic function y is equal to x squared plus 2. Complete the table below with the corresponding y values. I'm going to set up a few additional rows, the first being x squared. Negative 2 squared is 4, negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, and 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. If I've now got the values of x squared, in order to get y, I need to do x squared and then just simply add 2. So 4 add 2 is 6, 1 add 2 is 3, 0 add 2 is 2, 1 add 2 is 3, and 4 add 2 is 6. This is now the completed table. 
Question 16. Two bus companies depart from town A on separate routes. Bus Company 1 schedules their buses to depart from a town A every 35 minutes. Bus Company 2 schedules their buses to depart from town A every 14 minutes. If both companies have a bus departing at 7am, at what time will they both have another bus departing at the same time from town A? To answer this question, I'm looking for the lowest common multiple of 35 and 14. I'm going to split both 35 and 14 into product to prime numbers. 35 can be split into 7 times 5 and 14 can be split into 2 times 7. Each has a common prime number of 7. So writing the common prime number and multiplying this by each of the other prime numbers in the list will give me the lowest common multiple. 7 times 5 is 35 times by 2 is 70. This means that after 70 minutes, each company will then have another bus departing at the same time. 70 minutes is the same as 1 hour and 10 minutes. And adding 1 hour and 10 minutes to 7 a.m. means that I've got 8, 10 a.m. Question 17. The local council have built a skate park ramp. The ramp has a height of 80 centimetres, as shown below. Safety inspectors would consider the ramp to be safe if it has a gradient of 0.25 plus or minus 0.01. Determine whether the ramp is suitable. You must show your working. In order to calculate the gradient of the ramp, the first thing we need to do is make sure that the units of both numbers are exactly the same. 2.8 metres is 280 centimetres. To calculate the gradient, I divide the change in y divided by the change in x. So 80 divided by 280 gives me 0 0.2857. This is greater than the 0 0.25 plus or minus 0 0.01. The greatest this could be is 0 0.26. And because 0 0.2857 is greater than 0 0.26, this is not safe. Question 18. James invested £2,000 in a savings account that offers a compound interest of 5% per annum. Calculate the percentage change in his investment after three years. To calculate how much James would have after 3 years, start with the original amount and times it by the decimal multiplier. Because James is getting 5% every year, this is getting added on to what he starts with. So 100% plus 5 would give me 105%. And dividing 105 by 100 to turn it into a decimal is 1.05. To be able to calculate it after 3 years, we raise this to the power 3. So 2000 times 1.05 to the power 3 gives me 2315.25. To calculate a percentage change, you look at the change which is £315.25 and divide it by the original. Then times it by 100. This gives me 15. 76 to two decimal places. So the answer is 15.76%. An alternative to this method would be to look at the decimal multiplier. 1.05 to the power 3 gives me 1.157625. Notice how this part is exactly the same as our answer when we subtract 1 and times it by 100. Question 19. The perimeter of the rectangle is equal to the perimeter of the square. If the perimeter of the square is 40 centimeters, 
Calculate the length of the longest side of the rectangle. Because the perimeter of the rectangle is equal to the perimeter of the square, the first thing that we need to do is come up with an expression for the perimeter of the rectangle. Knowing that I can add the length and the width together and times it by 2 to find the perimeter, I will get 3x add 2 plus 2x minus 3 and in brackets with a 2 on the outside. Simplifying the bit inside the brackets would give me two lots of 5x minus 1 and therefore an expression for the perimeter would be 10x minus 2. Since the two perimeters were identical, this means that the perimeter of the rectangle, 10x minus 2, is now going to equal 40. Solving this equation, I can find out what x is equal to. Adding 2 to both sides would give me 10x is equal to 42, and x is equal to 4.2. The question states that I need to find the length of the longest side, and the expression for the longest side is 3x plus 2. Substituting x as being 4.2 into 3x add 2 would give 3 lots of 4.2 add 2. The answer to this question is then 14.6 centimetres. Question 20. The formula for the volume of a square base pyramid is v is equal to a third of the base times the perpendicular height to the base. If a square base pyramid has a total volume of 480 cm cubed and the height of the pyramid is 15 cm, calculate the length of one side of the base of the pyramid. Leave your answer in exact form. So substituting in the values I've been given, that the volume is 480, 480 would equal a third of the area of the base times by the height which is 15 centimeters. A third of 15 is 5 so I would get 5 times the area of the base is equal to 480. Dividing both sides by 5 would mean that the area of the base is 96 centimeter squared. Because the shape was a square base pyramid, we know that this will be the side length, which I will notate as being S squared, will be 96. So to find out the length of one side, I'll do S is equal to the square root of 96. This on my calculator returns 4 root 6 and this is your final answer.